Recently, I read an article published by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology's Sloan Management Review. The article was focusing on the predictors of attrition in the work environment. It was addressing why people leave their workplace and what's causing what we call today the great resignation. One of the top predictors of attrition surprised me. It was a toxic work culture. Now, anybody who's worked with me knows that I value very dearly making the experience of my coworkers, direct reports, indirect reports, contractors, whoever it is that works with me the best. I really truly value making sure that every person that I encounter has the best experience because your work life, it affects your personal life, your social life, your family life. They are all connected. So I want to share with you today my cues on how to address it, how to deal with it, how to manage it, and how to be the best that you can be. I'm Stephen Garner. Stay tuned. This is Next Cue. To give you some context, I'm going to share with you what the article states about what a toxic culture is. A toxic culture is by far the strongest predictor of industry adjusted attrition and is 10 times more important than compensation in predicting turnover. Our analysis found that the leading elements contributing to toxic cultures include failure to promote diversity, equity and inclusion, workers feeling disrespected and unethical behavior. And so now I want to share with you my next cue philosophy on how to deal with a toxic culture. Mainly the one point that I want to focus on is when you are disrespected, how do you manage that? How do you overcome that? How do you deal with that? Now, the obvious answer is if you can leave, just leave. But if you can't leave, you have to stay there. How do you deal with that skillfully? Let me just say this. Every place has a degree of toxicity. That's a reality of life. We all have struggles. People can be difficult at times. I can be difficult at times. Let's just be honest. Let's get that out. But I want to focus on how do you deal with being disrespected? Okay, so first of all, let's focus on respect. Respect is basically when a person values you, when you contribute meaningful things to another person's life, when you do things that help others, when you provide something that makes a difference in another person's life. That's what respect is. Respect is not some emotional term that we throw out. You literally have to contribute something. You have to have the communication and the actions that reflect why you should be respected. Number one. Number two, people should always assume that you are going to contribute something of value. That's why they should respect you. Okay, so I just want to get that out. If you're dealing with a person who is disrespectful, you don't want to be disrespectful in return. You want to contribute something that de-escalates the situation or provide some positive energy. So what I do, and I've learned this from my executive training, is that you always have to assume positive intent, even when negative people are doing negative things. You have to respond to that by looking for the positive. That's why you have to assume positive intent. And the reason you are assuming positive intent is so that you can find something in the situation that can make it better. This is hard to do when you are around negative people. That's the first thing. Feelings do matter in the work environment. When people tell you, well, your feelings don't matter, well, they do matter. But when you can't control how other people treat you and you're not feeling great as a result of that, you can think positively and address the issue in a way that doesn't make it worse for you. The second thing is to add value. Okay, you have to add value. Be objective. Be critical, but not negative. Okay, be critical. Be objective. Be fact-based. And make sure you add value. Be very specific and explicit about what you think is going to help solve the problem or how you deal with people. You know, you have to look at this from the standpoint that you can't control your environment. You can't control the people in your environment, but you can create an environment where you can control how you respond to things. 
This is why I'm big on using your imagination to create the world you want to live in, because you are going to be in situations where you just cannot change anything. And when you can't change anything, you have to change. That's a fact of life. And I'm telling you from my experience, this is not some theory. This is not something I made up. This is from my real life experience. I've been working for 31 years. I know. And I've worked on both sides, corporate, agency, retail, manufacturing. I've done all kinds of jobs in my experience. And one thing I've learned is that when I'm in a situation, when I can't control the negative energy in my environment, how people treat me, I need to contribute something good that's going to help me to stay stable and do well in that situation. Third thing is you have to, and this is tough right here, what I'm about to say, you have to help people. Sometimes it requires a degree of selflessness that seeks to understand their point of view, even though it's obvious that their point of view is not favorable for you, but you have to help them to be better. Okay, if you're gonna be working with someone for an extended period of time, you can't help them to be worse. That's the reality of it. Listen, those are my cues if you wanna be a better manager, leader, influencer, or a better person. Listen, continue to watch my channel. Like, share, subscribe. Also read my blog posts. I'm Stephen Garner. Take your cues from me and live a great life. Next cue.